Press like, subscribe and the notification buttons before you proceed to stay updated with our uploaded videos. There are three main types of solar power systems. On-grid, off-grid and hybrid solar systems. All solar power systems work on the same basic principles. Solar panels first convert solar energy, or sunlight, into DC power using what is known as the photovoltaic effect. The DC power can then be stored in a battery, or converted by a solar inverter into AC power which can be used to run home appliances. Depending on the type of system, solar energy can either be fed into the electricity grid for credits or stored in a variety of different battery storage systems. Let us first describe the common components used by all three types before going into more detail about the off-grid system, and how it works, and how to size it. The following is a general diagram showing on-grid system components. This type of solar power system is the most common one. It is connected to the home and to the traditional electricity utility grid. This type of solar power system does not include any storage battery. The solar power generated by the solar panels is instantaneously consumed by all the appliances. In case the solar power system is generating more power than the home is consuming, the excess power can be sold back to the utility company under a scheme known as net metering. When the solar power system is not producing sufficient power, the balance power required by the appliances is drawn from the utility grid. This type of system requires a few panels, wiring boxes and disconnects, and an inverter. The advantages of on-grid systems are that they are much cheaper since they use less equipment than the other types of rooftop solar power. This means a lower initial cost. Also, the operating cost of on-grid systems is very low because solar panels have 20 to 25 years lifespan. Moreover, absence of batteries means lower maintenance works. The setback of this type of solar power system is that when the sun goes down, you are not able to use any of the energy that the solar panels produced. Off-grid solar power system, as the name suggests, is a completely independent solar power system with energy storage that is not connected to the main utility grid. The solar panels are the only source of energy in an off-grid solar power system. Off-grid solar power systems are ideal for remote rural areas or applications where other power sources are either unavailable or impractical. Off-grid solar power systems can either be AC-based systems, in which case they include an inverter that converts the energy stored in batteries to AC power and feeds it to AC appliances, or DC-based systems that are cheaper as they don't need an inverter, but the power can only be fed to DC appliances. This type of system is more expensive because it is bigger since it's not connected to the electric grid. This requires more solar panels and batteries. One of the best things about this type of solar power system is that you don't depend on the utility company. Another benefit is that when everyone else has no electricity, your home will still have full power. This is very important to people with health conditions that require electronic devices or refrigerated medicines. Moreover, because you are producing your own electricity you will never again have to pay a bill to the utility company. On the other hand, these systems come with some disadvantages. Higher initial cost, if you don't have a connection from the utility company, you will need a backup battery when there is no sun. Adding this source of backup will increase your costs. Also, if the weather is cloudy or rainy for a few days, you may run out of stored electricity. A hybrid solar power system is a solar power system with energy storage that is similar to on-grid solar power system, but comes with an energy storage system usually in the form of battery backup. In the last couple of years, this type of solar power system is becoming very popular, even though it's more expensive. When solar energy production exceeds demand, the excess solar power is utilized to charge batteries and stored for later use. When production is lesser than demand, the stored energy from the batteries is used to make up the shortfall. The hybrid system consists of a PV array, a charge controller, a battery bank, and inverter. These three types of solar power systems all have their own advantages and disadvantages. Customers can accordingly choose the type of solar power system that meets their electricity demand. After we covered the basics of the three system types, we will go in deep through the off-grid system. Let us build an off-grid solar system to understand the role of each element. Solar panels are definitely the first component to think about. A simple explanation about solar panels working principle. Solar panels, known as PV panels, comprise many smaller units called photovoltaic cells. Photovoltaic simply means they convert sunlight into electricity. Solar cells contain a material such as silicon that absorbs light energy. The energy knocks electrons loose so they can flow freely and produce a difference in electric potential energy or voltage. The flow of electrons or negative charge creates electric current. 
Solar cells have positive and negative contacts, like the terminals in a battery. If the contacts are connected with a conductive wire, current flows from the negative to positive contact. Since we are dealing with off-grid systems, then the only source of energy is coming from sun, so we need batteries to store this energy and be able to use it during night and cloudy days. Connecting the panels directly to the battery cause unlimited charging which may damage or explode the batteries. Of course, we don't want this to happen because batteries are the most expensive elements in this system. To avoid overcharging issues a charge controller should be installed between the panels and the batteries. The role of the charge controller is to protect batteries by stopping the energy supply from the PV panels to the batteries when they are fully charged. As we previously said, current produced by the PV panels is DC current. Charge controllers come also with DC outlet to supply loads that run with DC operating current. Now we want to use the energy stored in batteries to power home loads like TV, lamps and so on. But most home appliances operate on AC current, so we need an inverter to invert the DC current to AC current. Another role of the inverter is to raise the voltage. So, inverter converts the 12 volts DC current received from batteries to 110 or 220 volts AC current and supply it to home loads. These are the must-have components in any off-grid system. Let us move forward to see how to size these components. The off-grid system could be a 12 volt or 24 volt system. That means a 12 or 24 volt battery system. In both cases, the PV panel selection must be of higher voltage than the designed battery voltage to be able to charge the batteries. Let us see why. Consider having two water tanks and we want to fill the tank on the right side with the one on the left side using gravity only. That could not happen if both tank levels are same. It will happen if only water level in the left side tank is higher than the water level in the right side tank. In this case water flows in this direction. Applying this concept on the solar system, voltage is the pressure and current is the flow. Therefore, voltage rating of the PV panel should be higher than the battery system voltage for the current to flow and charge the batteries. The two common types of PV panels in the market are 36 cells and 72 cells panels. A single photovoltaic solar cell can produce an open circuit voltage of about 0.6 volts, but when connected to an external load, the output voltage of the individual cell drops to about 0.5 volts so. In the case of 36 cells panel, the output is 18 volts and it is known as voltage at maximum power or VMP. 18 volts is the optimal panel voltage selection to charge 12 volts battery system. In the case of 24 volts battery system, the 72 cells panel are selected because they provide an output voltage of 36 volts considered optimal to charge the 24 volts battery. We have determined the panel VMP. Now we need to know how much energy in watt hours or kilowatt hours we need daily. Note that it is important to know what equipment you are going to run and for how long during the day you are going to run it to perform an accurate sizing and avoid oversizing and additional costs. So, what we need to do is to store the amount of energy we are going to use in a day in a battery bank. And then we will size the solar panels array accordingly to be able to charge the battery bank in a given number of hours. Let's assume we have a house with this list of appliances. So, we need to size a battery bank to store and deliver 6,516 watt hour per day. We need to account for the inefficiency of the inverter, usually 10%. 6516 multiplied by 1.1 is equal to 7167 watt hour per day. Next, we need to account for the effects of temperature on a battery's capacity to deliver energy. Lead acid batteries lose 30% its capacity as temperatures go down. For our example, we'll add a 1.5 multiplier to our battery bank size to compensate for a battery temperature of 20 degrees Fahrenheit in the winter. 7167 multiplied by 1.5 is equal to 10,750 watt-hour per day. Next, we should account for the efficiency loss that occurs when charging and discharging batteries. Typically, 20% inefficiency for lead-acid batteries and 5% for lithium-ion are used. So, 10,750 multiplied by 1.2 is equal to 12,900 watt-hour per day. So, 12,900 watt-hours minimum energy storage required. We need to consider the discharge depth or how much capacity is discharged from the battery. Sizing a lead acid battery for a maximum 50% depth of discharge will extend the battery's life. Lead acid batteries are commonly rated in ampere hours. To convert watt hours to ampere hours, divide by the system's battery voltage. In our example, consider 24 volt system. 12,900 divide 24 is equal to 538 ampere hour battery bank. 800 ampere hour battery bank is a good selection to account for discharge depth protection. Now that we've determined battery capacity, we can size the solar panels. The system should be sized based on the month with the lowest solar resource, typically December or January. 
So, how many sun hours we have per day in winter? If the site is in United States, then two and a half sun hours is a good estimate, but it could be lower or higher depending on your location. Let us consider it in USA, based on two and a half peak sun hours and 12,900 watt hour per day energy requirement. 12,900 divide 2.5 is equal to 5,160 watts panel array size.